again, everyone, and welcome back to our makeshift classroom. My friend Harold here loves school so much that he decorated our space to feel like he was there. Who doesn't love school? I figured since we can't go to school today, why not have school come to us? I've been wondering, Harold, is there anything about school you don't miss? Well, there is one thing I don't miss about school, the cafeteria. I'm always worried in the cafeteria. Why? Are you worried that today's spaghetti is made up of yesterday's hamburger patties? No, no, nothing like that. I'm worried that the lunch ladies will run out of my favorite foods before I get a chance to go through the line. Wait, has that ever happened? Well, no, not yet. So, you are concerned that something you've never seen happen might suddenly happen to you? Well, they say there's a first time for everything. What if I'm the last one in line and when I order my french fry pizza boat, they say, Sorry, all I have left is cold mashed potatoes. What would I do? Or if there wasn't any chocolate milk left and I had to settle for 2% milk? It would be such a tragedy. I seriously doubt that counts as a tragedy. Plus, it sounds to me like you need to learn to trust that the school has a plan for how much food to make to feed all the kids. More than that, you need to trust that God will meet your needs. That reminds me of a Bible story, in fact. Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to name a few things and I want you guys to take a moment to decide whether you think it is a need, something that you need to survive, or a want, something that you may not necessarily need, but something that you simply want. Okay, so I want you guys to listen and shout out need or want. Okay, the first thing is food. Is that a need or a want? What about video games? Do you think that's a need or a want? What about books? Is that a need or a want? How about love? Is that a need or a want? What about family? What do you think that is, a need? or a want? How about friends? A need or a want? How about ketchup? Is that a need or a want? One last thing. What about Jesus? Do you think that's a need or a want? I wonder how you responded to these and how you came up with your answer. Well, last time we talked about prayer and how Jesus taught people how to pray. And today we're going to continue to learn about something that Jesus taught people. And today the topic is on possessions. In today's story, we're going to learn that possessions do not give us true happiness and that God provides for all our needs. So let's Turn our Bibles to Luke 12, 13 to 34, and find out what Jesus says about possessions. Thousands of people came together to listen to Jesus' teachings. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share our father's inheritance with me. Jesus said, Watch out and be on guard against all greed. True life is not found in what you own. Then Jesus told the people a parable. A rich man owned land that produced many crops. He didn't have anywhere to store all of his crops. So he said to himself, I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have so much stored up that I can stop working and relax. But God told the man, you are a fool. You will die this very night, and then what good is everything you have stored up? Jesus told this story as a warning for any person who stores up treasure on earth and is not generous toward God. Then Jesus told his disciples, do not worry about your life or your body, what you will eat or what you will wear. Think about the birds. They do not plant or collect grain, yet God feeds them. Aren't you worth more than birds? Jesus also said, think about the wildflowers. They don't work or make clothing, yet they are lovelier than any king in his fancy clothes. If that is how God takes care of grass, which grows today and is cut down tomorrow, how much more will he do for you? Jesus told his disciples not to worry about food or drink. Seek God's kingdom, he said, and God will provide what you need. 
God is happy to give his children the kingdom. Finally, Jesus said, sell your possessions and give to the poor. A thief can take away treasure on earth, but treasure stored in heaven lasts forever. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In today's passage, Jesus tells us not to worry about anything because God takes care of all of his creation and he takes care of us all the more because we are his children. And Jesus showed how generous God's heart is toward us when he left his place in heaven and came to earth to die for us so that we can have eternal life. You know, there is no greater need than to be safe from our sins and to have eternal life in heaven with God. But that doesn't mean that God ignores our physical needs as well. He knows our hearts. He knows what we need. He knows our struggles and he takes care of our needs and he protects us and he guides us. But we have to make sure that we understand that sometimes, you know, we think that things that we want are things that we need. And sometimes when we don't get what we want, we think that God is not taking care of us, that God is not hearing our prayers. But when we understand what our true needs are, that we will realize that God has been providing for our needs. God has given us everything, everything that we need. And most of all, that God, that Jesus himself is the greatest need that we can ever have. And so just the fact that he sent his son, we can see that God is always there to take care of us. And he really cares about our best interests. He loves us. He created us. And he knows our heart. He knows our need even before we know it. And so when we understand and trust God's heart toward us, we can see that even when we don't get the things that we want, that that is God's way of taking care of us. That is his way of protecting us. And it's his way of truly loving us so that we can focus our eyes and our attention on the things that really matter, on the things that last forever. And so that we can truly shift our eyes, move our eyes away from the worldly things, the temporary things that make us happy maybe for one moment and to focus on our eyes on Jesus, the everlasting God who will give us eternal joy and eternal life. So when we understand this, we can trust that God knows what's best and God provides for us always. I want to ask you, is there anything that worries you, that makes you anxious, that gives you butterflies, or that makes you nervous? You know, maybe it's the situation around us. Maybe there's something that you are afraid uh, might happen. It didn't even happen, but maybe you're worried about something happening, something bad happening. Um, I want you guys to remember today's word, God's assurance, God's promise to you that he will take care of you. He knows our needs. He is listening to our prayers. And I want you guys to lay and confess even your most greatest worries to the Lord and allow him to give you peace and assure you that God is in control. He is taking care of you. He loves you. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much that you uh, clothe the field, you take care of the birds, and all the more, you take care of us. You love us so much. And through today's word, we are reminded, Lord, that you love us once again. And you cared for us so much that you sent your son to die on the cross. And we are so thankful. And I pray that we will continue to focus our eyes on all that you have done done and given to us, Lord, and that we will just continue to trust in you and leave our worries at your feet. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a time of offering. So as always, let's bring our very best heart and our offering to the Lord as we sing this song. Let's sing together. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all.
Let's pray one last time. Father God, we thank you so much for all that you've done for us. We want to respond with an offering of worship, and we pray that you will receive all that we have given you, and uh, our heart, our songs, our praises, and our possessions, Lord, and use it for your kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.